Hey everyone, this is Bella with Bella Ortiz Photography and Retouching, and I'm doing this video just to show you guys the new Color Grading Point O panel. So to get things started, I'm going to go with this simple color change just to show that you can customize the panel to be whatever color you want. For me, of course, I'm a pink kind of person, so voila, my panel is pink. And even after it's closed and reopened, it remembers what it is, as well as when Photoshop reopens. Alright, so my first step here, it's already in sRGB, which is what I actually did all the presets under, so if you're going for the most accurate to my design colors, I would work in sRGB, but Adobe RGB, of course, can give you a lot deeper possibilities. So I'm in sRGB, and I'm just going to do it in 8-bit mode because it's faster, but at the end, I tend to convert it to 16-bit, then flatten it, and then convert it back so I can get more smooth gradients. So for right now, I'm going to do the all-in-one setup. For now, it's required, but on uh, an upcoming update of the panel, I'll have it so that anytime you click on these, it'll check to see if this is already there, and if it's not, it'll create a new one, so you won't need to do the entire setup. But as you can see, after clicking that one button, when I open this, all these different layers are here. They are hidden, and they have default settings. Uh, the reason that they're hidden is because it'll actually run faster the less amount of um, layers that you've got visible. So now if I go into these base color presets, I always start at the beginning here at Cinema. And of course, not every color is going to work for every single photo, and sometimes there may just be some small tweaks you'll need to make, which is why I've got these down here for that. As well as on an upcoming update, there will also be a specific skin fix section where, you know, if the skin is too saturated, or in this case a little bit too yellow and saturated, it'll just be one click and you can adjust that. So for now, I'll just toggle through all these real fast so you can see them. I really love the cinema section. It's, I think that they're pretty vastly different and they kind of give off the vibe that go along with the name. There's bridal, a little bit moody and some are bright and vivid. Jock's probably one of my favorites as well, though on darker photos with people who are more tan, it's going to come up with a much more yellow effect. So just to show how the new panel, or the new update will work, they'll have something where you can just click one button and it'll make this adjustment that I'm doing right now. So yeah, one click and it'll do what just took me, you know, probably about 15 seconds to do. But saving seconds is what it's all about. So I'll leave that there in case I need to use it for any of the other colors. But for now I'll turn it off so I can see what the others look like. See Rebel, I actually like it with that color of skin tone, but if you were to enable this again it would bring her more down to the pale level. <coughs> Excuse me. These fashion ones were designed with sort of specific settings um, background-wise in mind. So Lookbook was kind of with just that whole gray or, you know, fairly neutral toned back backdrop or solid colors. Swimwear, of course, with mostly blues and um, browns. Then editorial really can work anywhere but it's a little bit more desaturated and moody, kind of that Vogue type look. And then commercial is meant for more bright and vivid photos, like, um, you know, family sitting on the grass or something like that. So if I go back here, I'm just going to choose one of my favorites. I'll just go with sci-fi because it looks awesome. But as you can see, it's, it's way too dark in the shadows here. The 
camera that I used had a really heavy vignette just all by itself. So first I'm going to try a shadow lift. So all I have to do is click these buttons here. It will start boosting those shadows for me. I'll see what it does when I take the contrast down. Now what's happening is it's actually brightening it because all of these layers that I have work underneath this layer. And so this layer is listening to whatever information is down below and depending on what that pixel is exactly colored, it's going to change to whatever this wants it to be. So if the photo is getting brighter, it's because this is telling it that, you know, if a pixel is a certain color, it also needs to be brighter. So I'm just going to bring that back down. Maybe exposure up a little bit. Nah, I kind of like it that dark color. Then for temperature, maybe try something a little warmer. You know, right is warm and left is cool. It's similar to how Camera Raw or Lightroom or Capture One are, where you know warmer to the right, cooler to the left, and same with tint, uh, more magenta to the right and greens to the left. So, yeah, you could go crazy. Um, basically, what's happening is a few different settings throughout you clicking these. Once it it gets to zero, um, you can see that the fill is going up as I or down as I'm going up but then once it hits zero a different setting is being applied here so that if you keep clicking up it'll start going in the opposite direction so I thought that was a pretty good time saver because if for one photo you want to go cold and one warm it's super easy to fix it so I'm just gonna set that back to zero also, if you ever need to just toggle something, you can click right on these words themselves. So, I know I messed with contrast, so if I click on contrast, it'll just quickly hide it for you. So you don't have to go here and scroll through and search in case you've got all kinds of other layers going on as well. And then my shadow lift, I can see that I did there. Temperature only changed a little. Tint even less, so zero and then saturation. Alright, so that is how those basic adjustments work. I've got them in the order that I believe makes the least amount of banding, but banding becomes less of an issue at the end when I show you my method of compression. So now I'll just show you my quick light add-ons. Here is just a fill layer, and it's pretty bright because afterwards you would just adjust the opacity however you wish. And you can also mess with the uh, blend if slider properties when you double click here. So for this, if I just take it down just a bit there, and show that I'm brightening it up a little by her face. Maybe put it back here to balance out from where that other light is. That's pretty good. And then I'll just show you the flare, which is gold to begin with, but it's totally adjustable afterwards. So I'll just put that there for now, since that's where the light is actually coming from. Click OK. And here is where the color is. So I'm going to double click on it. You can easily tick down the tone, change it completely, and go all crazy with it. because of this setting, I'm just going to go super pale, then we go back down to the base layer of it and just lessen it quite a bit. Because I just want a little bit of the effect. Even less. I'm not used to doing these talk as I work things, so if I am talking quite a bit, that's why, but the way that I used to do my tutorials and can still do them in the future it's, it takes quite a long time to voice over everything, taking out all the nonsense in between. <laughs> right, and then obviously this photo doesn't need a vignette, but I'm going to show it anyway, just to show that it's also movable. And in a future update, I'll also make it colorable the same way I made this colorable. For now, though, a really quick way to do such a thing is just by creating a solid layer right here and 
clipping it down so that you change the color completely. So I'll just take that off of there, get rid of it completely. Now you can toggle the settings, all of it, the same way that you did here by clicking on settings. Or you can go to the menu if it, you know, we're somewhere here and you just have to scroll all the way up until you see the color grade point oh layer and show and hide it. It's, it does the same thing. It's just all about trying to make things kind of in a particular order so you can just keep in mind where everything is. So there is that. I'll go cooler with this one. Now I'm going to show you something that I think will save people a lot of time. Also, when you're picking out colors, I recommend working on a small image. Like, if you've got a set of images to do, take one picture from it and shrink it down to like 25% and work on that when you're just trying to come up with the colors that you want. Because the larger the photos are, and especially if you're going to work in 16-bit from the get-go or Adobe RGB, it's going to take longer to do each layer. Like when you're showing and hiding, it takes much longer because there's a lot more data for it to read. So if you work in a smaller picture to begin with, you can apply these settings to the larger photos after and then just tweak a couple things that won't take nearly as long to have to show, show and hide things. So I'm going to show you first that you can save things here. You click save load and you enter your name here. So I'm going to call this one Danny. And if I were to delete this, just completely remove it, or say I started a whole new photo, just go back to the save load, go to Danny. And as you can see, it brought back everything that I had just done. And what's really, really awesome is it's actually saving this entire thing. So anything that you put in here, any specific fill lights, or um, I just can't even think of anything else, I guess, but <laughs> fill lights or any other color adjustments that you would need, um, like the skin color, for example. You know, if, if I had that skin color one here, the hue saturation one, then it will save that too and bring it back. So really awesome there. Anything that's within this, when you click save, it's going to save that. Now I will say that in order to save it time and space on your computer, it as it's saving it, it's shrinking the file down to like 10 pixels so that you get just the smallest amount of space taken up on your computer. So you don't have to worry about that. However, if you've got information like a healing layer or um, you know, a dodge and burn layer, it's going to shrink it down to 10 pixels. So any photo that you blow back up on, even if it's the same photo, you know, it's, it's going to try to stretch that back again, but it's not going to be accurate. So if you've got those kind of settings, I would suggest removing them uh, from the folder, just moving them up or down above or below the folder and bringing them back in after the fact. So that was saving and loading. And then this is just the copy and apply are basically the same thing, but instead of saving and loading and naming it specifically, you would just, if you had, you know, four or five photos open, you just hit copy and it'll take what you've got here right now and then you go to the next photo and you just hit apply. So it makes it, you know, a little bit faster. You don't have to think of specific names or, or anything like that and it'll just give you a quick view of what's there. And then if I wanted to reset everything, when you hit reset, all it, it won't reset your base color, but it's just to reset any adjustments that you made um, under the color because you know it, sometimes you can go crazy you, you find a preset that looks pretty perfect but you make all sorts of adjustments and then you can find yourself going really far with those adjustments to the point where when you go to another preset things just look way off like not at all what you want for any of them and it's really irritating kind of to try to wiggle your way back from that. So I made a quick reset so that it'll set everything that's within this adjustment section back to zero so that you can kind of start anew with whatever preset you're on. So that is my 
quick little demo of how this all works, and I hope you guys learn that uh, you can save a heck of a lot of time with this. So, have a good night. Bye. This is sort of a PS because I forgot that I was going to show you guys how to avoid some heavy banding. <laughs> so, um, the, my method is I will just click on this folder, or click on the topmost layer that I'm going to flatten. But as you can see, I'm in 8 bit, and when I go to flatten it, you can see that there's still tons of banding here in the uh, flare area, and there usually is in shadows and dark greens and blues. So that'll just be to show the 8 bit. But now I'm going to actually convert it to 16 bit. As you can see right off the bat, we lost a lot of those lines that went over. And this photo already is small, so it's going to have banding a little bit no matter what because it's just a tiny compressed JPEG that I was using. But if I now flatten it, create a flattened layer with Command Option Shift E or Control Alt Shift E if you're on a PC, now you can see the difference between the 16 bit and the 8 bit flattened image. And of course, only if you're playing this in 1080p can you really see. And, you know, like I said, there's still going to be some pixelation just because that's the JPEG file. But you can see these rings that'll appear here on the 8 bit version right here. Bam. Versus the 16 bit. So that really helps. And then, of course, you can always add a tiny little noise layer, though I wouldn't go too crazy with it. But that is my postscript sort of <laughs> commentary because I didn't want to leave you hanging. So. Now have a good night.